All right, so now what we need to do is we need to marry the bottom with the bun fans with the box itself. So the first thing I need to do is give it a little bit of glue. here. It's kind of a messy job. All right, we want to make sure that we have our, our B space. So it should be down three-eighths of an inch. Beautiful. Well, let's nail it. That's more like it. All right. Those are married. so far. Next, we need to put together the heat box and then we'll wire this one up. All we do is build the super and mount some light bulbs. Beautiful. And there we go, let's check it for square. Now take it. Let's leave this one. 
to dry. We'll come back in a bit when this is dry and we'll, uh, we'll continue. Okay, so now we have both boxes. This is the box that's going to contain the, uh, the heat lamps. We've got to build a bottom for this one yet. And this is the box with the cooling unit and it's going to have the control units in it. But what I need to do now is drill some holes for ventilation and then we will use corks to plug the holes, that way we can control the ventilation in the hives. So, what I will do, you want to drill these holes down at an, at an angle so that if it rains, it does not rain into your boxes. That would be a uh, travesty. It would make things make a mess. We don't want to make a mess. But what we want is we want to make sure that we provide these bees with adequate ventilation. We've got to have some place for this air to go. <clears throat> so, I want to measure up two inches from the bottom. Let's move that. Measure two inches. of being short. All right, now what we need to do is we need to mark these guys. We need three holes, so we're going to put one in the middle. It's a 20 inch box, so we're going to put one at 10. Put one at four and one at 16. <clears throat> now I'm going to use a Forstner bit drill holes. The reason I chose this bit <clears throat> is that this bit will give me a nice smooth hole. And then at the end, we use a cork to plug the holes. Now you can buy these on Amazon by the gross. I think I bought 50 of them. And they work very well for plugging the holes. So let's see what we can do here. Here's one. Let's do the rest. Beautiful. Now Check for fit and make sure that the uh, corks are going to fit. Perfect. We will finish up by putting some screen, some hardware cloth inside the box. We want to make sure <clears throat> that we don't get any bees in the top box here. So let's take a look. Get some, some snips. Stapler out. All right, 
Now, we are bee proof on the inside of the box. We have our fans. We're ready for the controllers. We have our ventilation holes, which we will put corks in. Now, <clears throat> I need to create a bottom for this one. Let's see what we have here. Twelve and a quarter. By eighteen. Seven sixteenths. What we do? Beautiful. Let's put a bottom in this board. Again, we have to make sure we leave B space, even though this box is going to be sitting on the base. You know what? We don't even need B space on this one, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put, put some on there anyways, just to, just to be safe. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get this glued up. Not a paid endorsement, but if you uh, do any woodwork at all, this is the stuff that you want. This tight bond is good glue. All right, let's see what we can do here about getting this inside. Beautiful. Alright, now we have a bottom. Now this is something else that I learned after building the first one. At the end of the first season, my bottom board was warped. And that is because any rain that blows in the front of the hive through the bottom board will gather in this box. Now. It's bad because it will warp the bottom of this board, kind of an aesthetic issue. But what's worse is that I will have two electric lights down on the bottom and I do not want to turn my beehive into one giant electrode and shock my bees. So what we're going to do is drill a few drainage holes in the bottom of this. So we want these holes to be large enough to let the water out but not large enough to let it be in. So let's see here, we're just gonna eyeball it. And there you have it. Now water can drain from the bottom of this box. Now, before we go any further, what we need to do is we need to take these boxes that were the bargain bin boxes, and we need to pretty them up a little bit. So I'm going to hit them with the belt sander, then the palm sander, then we're going to stain them. Then we'll uh, finish putting the components in.
right. So, a couple of things. There's no need, even if you want to have finished garden hives, that you cannot use the bargain basement hive bodies that they send, right? So these, I got them for cheap. And once we stain and finish these, they're gonna look like the expensive model. Of course, they're not cedar. I wish they were cedar, but we can finish these in such a way that they look like cedar. They will match my cedar hives and they will be waterproof. And in case you were wondering why I broke the edges down, with the sander at the end, I, I do that so that when I apply the finish, there's no way for the water to get behind the finish. So if you, if you break the edges down before you put the actual finish on, the finish will adhere better to the box and you have to let the stand less of a chance of getting water uh, behind the finish when it rains. And basically it'll, it'll add to the longevity of your, uh, of your box. So let's take a look at the, uh, the stain I'm going to use. So this is, this is I think it's gun stock, right? And when I'm using pine hives, I'll use the gun stock. If I'm using cedar hives, I'll use colonial maple. And that should take them about to the same color. So we're going to go ahead and use the gun stock. A little imperfection but I'm gonna call that character a little bit of character on the hive nothing wrong with that all right and before I destroy my shirt any further all right there's one box Set them aside to dry. Get the second box out here. No reason the bargain basement hive boxes have to look bad. Now, you can paint them, most people paint them, and if you do, you don't have to sand them and stain them and finish them and worry about how pretty they are or how square they are. The box will work the same for the bees. They don't really care. Like I've said before, they don't care whether they're living in a nice hive or living in an old damp log. The bees are happy nonetheless, but me to be happy. I want these to look good in the yard. So 
So I like to stain them and finish them. Gives a little more character. That's all right. I like character. I like character. If they were perfect, that would be no fun. Nothing to look at. Right. Wipe the box down. That one's done. All right. So now we have our bottom box. The only thing left to do here is to drill some holes for the power cord. We'll do that after the box dries. And we have the control unit, which will sit above it. we're making progress. All right, so as soon as these boxes dry, we'll come back, drill the holes. We'll drill the holes for the power cables first. Then we will put the spar varnish on the boxes. Then we will install the components. And then we will be done. So until next time, let these dry.